Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Angelica and in today's video we are going to be exploring all the brushes that I use, like my favorite, favorite brushes. Like, as you can see, I have like loads of brushes. Like I have like all these brushes and I have them separated by like the big brushes and the smaller kind of brushes. I use a good 80% of them, but these are like my favorite, favorite. And we will go through mostly florals because that's what I focus on, but um, I'll show you how they can be used in, in the different ways and why I like them so much for any one particular thing. So just a super, super quick overview. These three are from the same brand, which is uh, Betty Hayways. I have a code down below so you can find them. I have, well, this one's the same as this one. I'll put this one back in the little ones. I have the Sudokome brush, which I also have a web link for. It's just, I think it's a, I think it's a Japanese store. Um, but I found, I found it online and maybe you guys can, can buy it there. Then these two are from a local store. The thing is these together with this one, I bought them when I lived in Japan. So I would just like walk into Tokyo Hands or Sekaido, I think I went there once. And Sekaido has a little bit more variety in terms of um, worldwide renowned brands. But Tokyo Hands is a little bit more local. And this one in particular, I found it through Jolie, Jolie Poa. She's an amazing watercolorist. I think she lives in the Philippines. Um, but she does travel to Japan quite a lot and she first found this brush. So I give her all the credit for finding this amazing brush. And then, so these ones I found at a local store. I don't think I have a video for that. I should edit that video. Um, it's called Sasabe Art Supply Store. It's one of those like small mom and pop shops where they only accept cash really. Um, it's like three floors of, it's small, but it's still like three floors. And um, so it's like not a Sekaido or a Tokyo Hands. It's only for art supplies. And so these two I found there, you cannot find these online because it's at a local Japanese store. Um, but I'm sure you can find like a Princeton or a Winsor & Newton equivalent of it, but these are amazing and I'm not going to change my brand for those fancy ones. Then these two are a by Hobin, so it's also Japanese and I found them again at a Japanese store. I think it was Hambachi or something like that. It was at Osaka Station. Anyway, this is my favorite, favorite, favorite dagger brush. Granted, I've never tried another one, but this one works amazing. So I just, you know, if it works, don't change it. So this is by Holbein. It's a black resable. One is black resable. The one that are like, the ones that are like um, burgundy kind of color are black resable because I have a few that are like black resable like this or this. I believe they're natural hairs, so it's not vegan, sorry. And then this one is a para resable, um, which definitely synthetic um, bristles. Then this, another para resable, uh, not para resable, sorry, resable by Holbein, made in Japan, it's another angle brush. It's just bigger than the other one that I just showed you. Then the Winsor & Newton, I think this is the only Winsor & Newton that I have. And uh, it's, it doesn't hold a lot of water, but it's very tiny. So I really, really love it. And I use it for, obviously, for details. And I forgot to pull out some of my favorite, which are this um, Camlon, Camlon Pro by Arte, Arte Hey. I don't know what, how it's called, like how it's said, but also made in Japan. I found it in the Japanese store, I think. Where did I find it? It was not at Tokyo Hands, but I think it was in that other Kawachi store in Osaka Station. 
um, but they're amazing. They're like super soft. I was actually recently using this one. It was the first Camelon Pro I bought. They are synthetic, but they're super, see how like bouncy it is. It doesn't lose its ch shape. I've had it for about two years now and it is an amazing brand. Actually, Sasabe. I think that's where I found them, at Sasabe, at the local Japanese store. Um, I also have other ones like this Winsor & Newton. It's one of the fancier ones. It's just a round brush. I mean, I could do, I, I use it readily. Um, I also have some like Chinese, Chinese calligraphy brushes, but they're kind of all over the place. I rarely use them. Like, see, I, I bought this one, I think, in Kyoto, and I've never used it because um, it's just, I have so many brushes, like, it's serious, it's the problem. Um, yeah, so I think that's it. Well, I have this Raphael, it's a little one, I have it on my other desk, but uh, this is not a Raphael, but it kind of sort of looks like this. It is great when it comes to holy water, but it is squirrel hair, so it is not vegan. I know people are like super into that vegan thing, but, um, but yeah, so let's get painting with these brushes that are super amazing. Okay, so as always, we are going to use the Arches watercolor paper that has a little bit of texture, 300 grams. And I just so happen to have this big block. So I am going to just cut it and two smaller pieces. So I don't use any cutting tools or anything, literally with all my paper, 99% of my paper gets cut by hand. have all of our brushes ready to be used we have our water and we are going to use turquoise cadmium yellow maybe some indigo and maybe some orange red cadmium i think that's what it's called So we are going to start with the Betty Hayways number seven because we are going to start with leaps and this is a perfect brush for that. It is synthetic, it's bouncy and it has a nice dip. So there is a full review of these particular brushes in this other video if you want to check it out. So again, what I do with my paints is I just get them ready. So with a little bit of turquoise and a little bit of yellow, I created this green, which is gonna go through, see, like, it just holds holds a lot of water. And the tip is very, very um, small. See, I can make these little details with just this brush number seven. Now we are using a Betty Hayways number five. The, the tip is a little bit more round like it doesn't have the same pointedness. So I will show you what that means for the exact same leaf. It's not as fine, like I'll say that. It's not holding that much water um, because it's a number five. but it still works. So with this one, it's just a lot, it's just a little bit 
harder to make this finer uh, kind of details. That's all, but it's still great. I'll show you, uh, I use it mostly for if I have to make like So for this particular brush, what I really like to do is maybe something like the more round kind of uh, shapes. See how here, like the shape of the brush is what I'm using to create these leaves really. So yeah, that is this brush. Now I am going to use a silver brush by Black Resable, made in Japan. It's a number four, series 700. And this brush is great for flowers. Well, it can also work for these, like I'll just show you. But it's just harder. I mean, it works, but that's not what it is for. For is for making flowers. So you use the flatness of the brush to create, so you use the flatness to create the shape of the flower. Now this one, which is a Kamlin Pro uh, number four, is the same kind of brush, it's, a, it's again, a, but it's synthetic. So it just holds uh, its shape differently, a little bit differently. So we'll see how that shows up. So it's just smaller and it, the flower is a little bit more controlled. Like the shape of the flower, you can control it a little bit more, but it is an amazing brush and I love it. This one, you can do a little bit more detail than, than with the, the, with the black resable, like so. Now we'll move on to a larger brush. This is also a Camlon Pro, but it is very large. Like I said in the introduction, it is a number 10. And we will do our leaves. But it just holds a lot of water. Like whenever I tip the brush down, see how like it accumulates water? So, 
it just holds a lot, a lot of water. It is so soft, it's like butter. It just flows and it just, it is just absolutely soft to paint with this brush. I'll do like another example. So I painted this entire little thing with just one load of pigment. So I could just go on forever if I wanted to with this one, I haven't loaded it again. So this brush is just really, really amazing. I um, absolutely love this brush. Now we are moving on to an angle brush, which is, you know, obviously angled. And it is synthetic. It is by Resable Holbein made in Japan, Series 500A. And what I really love with these brushes, with this particular brush, is you load it fully with one color. And then just the angle of the brush, just like a little bit of it, just like this. You load just the tip. And like magic happens. Now this is the angle brush that is a lot smaller. It's a, it says one fourth. It's the one that I bought at a local store, it's Sasabe. Um, and it's technically, I mean, the same. So we're just gonna load it up. But it's just, you know, a lot smaller when I don't wanna paint a little bit smaller. Like, I'm sure you can do like finer little. Now this brush, the dagger, like 
This is one of my favorite brushes by far. Para resable, you can do like multiple things with this brush. For example, You can actually draw flowers with it. So this brush is just very versatile and it just, it is an amazing brush and I love it. Now, since we have the center of this flower to fill in, this is what the Surukami brush I use it constantly for. And you just kind of tap it and let it dry and repeat that process a few times. You can also use a Surukami brush to make a tree, this. Since we have to complete the tree, we are going to use the Winsor & Newton, the uh, Series 7. This is one of my fanciest brushes. And we are just going to use a little bit of indigo and we are going to draw. And that is it for this brush. Now for this brush, it's a number zero and it's a stip, it's, I think it's called a stippler brush and it's just very fine. What I'm going to do, load it up. And with these ones that are, these ones maybe that are already dry,
as you can see I did this leaf and this entire thing with only one load of this brush of the pigment it holds a lot of water I don't have to keep reloading it like the Winsor & Newton and it's just very bouncy and is one of my favorite brushes Now maybe to finish up, we're gonna do a little bit more of this. And that is it. We have tried all of our brushes. Okay, so that is all I have to show you in regards of brushes. I hope you guys had fun and I hope you guys learned about the different brushes that I really like. And if you have any questions about the brushes or where to buy them, if I can find a link online, or if you ever do go to Japan and want to visit any of the stores that I bought these brushes at, then let me know in the comments. Again, if you learned anything from the video, if you like the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date in all the content that I upload once or maybe twice a week. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.